My name is Brian Heisler. I'm a senior education major here at Stetson University, and I will be presenting my senior research with you today. The topic of my senior research is the Grade 8 Mathematics FCAT test. Procedural, conceptual, or both? The purpose of my research is to determine what procedural and conceptual knowledge I can gain from analyzing the Grade 8 Mathematics FCAT test so that I can implement this in my classroom as a future teacher and have my students succeed to the best of their ability. I will first explain my concept map to you. The concept map begins with the FCAT. The FCAT is the Florida Comprehensive Analysis Test and is a test taken by all Florida public school students in grades 2 through 10. The FCAT produces scores which are based upon or which determine the scale score and the achievement level. The achievement level is based on a range from 1 to 5, with 1 being the lowest and 5 being the highest. The scale score is a numerical grade ranging from 0 to 3,000. In my research I have found that about a third of the students who take the FCAT score either a 1 or 2 in the achievement level, about a third of the students score in the achievement level 3, and about a third or even less of the students score in the achievement level of four or five. So what this means is that approximately two-thirds of the students are scoring average or below. This is a number that needs to drastically change so students can score higher. The scale scores, the average score um, for a level three achievement level is approximately 1,950. The scale score correlates to the achievement level as, as they can kind of go back and forth. The way these achievement level, the way these scores are determined is based upon the number of questions correctly answered. The types of questions here that are scrolling across are the multiple choice, the grid response, the short response, and the extended response. These questions are also broken down into complexity levels. There is either a low complexity, a moderate complexity, and a high complexity question. The multiple choice questions are usually your low complexity problems requiring procedural knowledge and a simple one or two steps to solve the answer. The gridded response questions require that these students uh, actually write in a numerical answer in a grid that is provided on the test. These, are, these two types of questions are usually your low and moderate complexity questions. The short response questions and the extended response questions are scored differently and are also harder. The short response questions are scored on a scale from 0 to 2, 0 being the lowest, 2 being the highest. These questions require a little more conceptual knowledge of mathematics and require that you do more work to find the correct answer. My research has shown that the majority of students will score either a 0 or a 1 on these questions and thus need to be improved. The extended response questions are the ones that are considered the high complexity. These are the toughest of the questions found on the FCAT test. My research has shown that approximately 70 to 75 percent of these students score below average. The extended response questions are scored on a scale from 0 to 4, 0 being the lowest, 4 being the highest. My research has shown that 70 to 75 percent of the students um, score either a 0 or a 1 on these type questions. And approximately 2 to 3 percent of the students score a 4. As we can see, the heavy majority of students do not have the full mathematical knowledge to correctly understand and answer these questions. These questions we can measure to some extent the mathematical knowledge that students have, either of procedures or concepts. Procedural mathematical knowledge is considered the what. What it is you need to do to answer the question, what steps you need to take to find the solution. The conceptual knowledge of mathematics is considered the why. Is to consider what do you need to know to answer this question. This is a deeper understanding of the question, and thus if students have a higher conceptual knowledge of mathematics, they will understand more questions and be able to answer questions quicker and easier. These mathematical concepts and procedures are taught in the classroom by the teachers, and thus I hope to be able to take out the procedures and concepts found in the FCAT test to implement it in my future classroom 
so I can teach my students to become the to succeed to the best of their ability at the FCAT mathematics test. I will now present my V diagram. The focus question of my research is how can the FCAT scores provide teachers with information to enhance the students' procedural and conceptual knowledge of mathematics? In looking at this, I will first consider the conceptual aspect of it. In my research, I will look at the conceptual aspect and the methodology behind my research in hopes of analyzing and evaluating the mathematics grade 8 FCAT to gain insightful procedural and conceptual knowledge. The key concepts I have gone over in my concept map um, provided me with principles um, that I have found from my research. The first principle says that students as a whole are performing poorly on the mathematics section of the FCAT, which can be determined based upon the FCAT website, which provided me with a past test to look at. The results I already went over my concept map from the achievement levels and the skill scores show that students as a the majority of students are scoring at average or below average on the FCATs. This number needs to be changed. We need to have more students score higher on these tests. Students lack the conceptual knowledge to perform well on the short response and extended response questions and the high complexity questions. Looking at the grading rubrics and the articles put out by educators and scores from the FCAT website and the Florida Department of Education, I have found what is needed to succeed in these FCAT tests and what conceptual knowledge is needed to do well on these high complexity questions. And I have determined that students do not, as a whole, have this high level of conceptual knowledge to succeed and score well on these questions. Um, from this, I am stating that students need to be taught higher level thinking in mathematics as this is the area they struggle with the most. They seem to do decent to fairly well in the lower complexity and moderate complexity questions, and thus they need to be focused more on the high complexity questions as, as I mentioned earlier, this will help them understand why they are taking the steps necessary to find a solution to the problems that they have. My value claims state that by analyzing the FCAT, we can gather information as to where students struggle, thus allowing for teachers to guide their teaching in this direction. If we can analyze the FCAT math test and we can find where students struggle most, we can implement these lessons into our classroom and me personally, I can implement them in my classroom as a future teacher to help my students succeed to the best of their ability on the FCAT math test. The purpose of my research um, correlates to my philosophy about this topic and that the FCAT is a very important test and students need to improve upon their scores. The FCAT is a very high stakes test for students and the schools in which they attend and the students need to score to the best of their ability to improve not only their grades, but also the school, the school's grade, as both are affected in numerous ways by the results of these scores.